What's up YouTube? Back at it again with another banger video. We are on part 11 of the Crisis on Infinite Earth series. The penultimate issue. We got one left after this. This issue, I really enjoyed. Especially the, the beginning half. So if you remember where we last left off, there was this showdown between the Spectre and the Anti-Monitor. And there was the, the shattering of the universe. If you remember, the uh, the heroes went back to the dawn of time to stop Anti-Monitor from rewriting history. And meanwhile, the, uh, the villains were transported back to Oa to stop the scientists from looking back at the dawn of creation. The villains were not successful. So this still happened, which means that Anti-Matter still exists within our universe, which you will see in this issue. But let's just get into this issue now. Uh, starts off, we see the creation of the new universe. We get our title, Aftershock. We see Earth 2 Superman waking up in his apartment. It is a sunny morning in Metropolis, 1985. And he notices that, uh, that Lois isn't there and that his apartment looks a little bit different than how he remembers it. And he goes to work, and he sit, goes to his office, and Perry White comes in, and he gets mad, and he's like, why are you in my office? And Clark Kent is like, this is my office. And he's like, you don't have an office. And so uh, Clark Kent from Earth One, he gets involved. He says, oh, this is my uncle. I, I'm named after him. His name is also Clark Kent. And, uh, and I told him that I was an editor, and that's why he was in your office. You know, making up an excuse. They both note that something weird is going on. That they both have noticed things are different, but also things are the same. It isn't quite Earth 1. It isn't quite Earth 2. They're flying around. They, land, they, uh, they pass by a sign that says, Welcome to the Twin Cities, Central and Keystone. Keystone City is in Earth 2. Central City is on Earth 1, so that they're occupying near the same space is, is odd. So they go to uh, Jay Garrick's house. Jay Garrick's wife does not recognize Superman from Earth 2, even though he claims to have been there multiple times to come over for dinner. They go into Jay Garrick's shop. Wally West is there, and they're... Uh, they're they're messing around with the uh, with the cosmic treadmill again from a few issues ago. So the Superman are talking to him and, and they say that uh, you know something fishy's going on. This isn't quite Earth One. It's not quite Earth Two. They don't know where they are. Superman from Earth Two really wants to get back to his Earth. So he asked them if they can use the cosmic treadmill to to you know pop over to his universe. But when they fire it up, it's just a black void. There is no other universe. There's no other universes. Superman from Earth 2, he kind of starts to panic here. He starts to float out into the nothingness. He's putting together what's, what's happened. That there are no other universes. That there's just the one that they exist on. And that they can't travel to any others because they've all combined into this one singular universe. Meaning that all of the people that he's known throughout his life, some of them might exist, some of them are gone. He's, this is the second time he's lost his home world. When they get back to the new universe, the cosmic treadmill is destroyed, and this time for good. We get this motley crew of space adventurers here, and Animal Man for some reason. But yeah, it's Dolphin, Animal Man, Atomic Knight, uh, who else? Adam Strange, Captain Comet, and they are aboard uh, Brainiac's ship. On the page previous, they mentioned something important. It says, uh... I remember there was an Earth 1 and Earth 2 and so on, but my partners swear there was only one Earth. So the people who were present 
for the event in the last issue, for that showdown between the Spectre and the Anti-Monitor. They remember all past universes. They were there for that singularity. But anyone who wasn't present for that has no memory of there ever being alternate universes. So they're aboard Brainiac's ship right now, and the ship, the metal parts seem to be moving, but Brainiac himself is still, and they, they think he's dead. This this reminds me of the uh, of the space jockey from Alien. I think that's his name. So Jay Garrick, Wally West, and the two Supermen they decide to call a meeting at the Teen Titans hideout, the Titans Tower. I didn't realize that the Titan Tower. It says that it's situated on a private island in New York's East River. I didn't realize that that's where that was supposed to be. For some reason, I always imagined it like San Francisco or something like like an island out there west coast but that's probably just because of the cartoon so here they are they're discussing their theories on what's happening harbinger is back uh cyborg says i thought you lost your powers she says in the rebirth of the universe many realities have changed so it, they're, the writers are keeping whatever they like about, you know, the old comics, and they're getting rid of whatever they don't like. It's an easy way to just, you know, retcon everything. So Huntress seems a little depressed here. She says that she woke up in a park. She went back to her apartment. There was someone else living there. Someone else's name on the door. She goes to a payphone. This kind of dates this comic and calls information. And they said that they've never heard of Helena Wayne. She's break down crying. And she goes to the cemetery and looks for her dad's grave. And there isn't one. So not only has he not died, but he never existed to begin with in this universe. Harbinger explains the history of this universe. Since different characters here are from different universes their history that they remember will be different than the history of this earth. She explains that, you know, there were dinosaurs and the cavemen, and then there was Vikings and, you know, the settlers in the West and the, the cowboy days and World War One, World War II, the freedom fighters. We get the, the origin of Batman origin of Superman. And Superman from Earth 2 mentions that that was uh, Krypton from Superman. That was Superman. So Superman 2 notes that that was Kal-El of Earth 1. That was his Krypton. And that his... So Superman from Earth 2 realizes that the Krypton they're talking about is Earth-1 Superman's Krypton, not his Krypton. His Krypton never existed and was never destroyed, and he was never sent to Earth, or at least the Earth that he knew. So we then go to the uh, the astral realm, this, this sort of spirit world that uh, these uh, more um, occult characters occupy. Dead Man, uh, the Spectre. And we see that the Spectre, he's exhausted after this battle. And he's, he's, uh, his body is resting. Dr. Fate is in Salem with Etrigan the Demon. Through the smoky cloud, they can see other places. They see this character named Amethyst. She's being uh, persecuted by this, by this angry mob who thinks that, you know, she's the one that's caused all of this. All of this, um, these storms. This character called Dr. Occult comes to her rescue. I had never heard of this character before. Turns out he's a very old character uh, created by the same guys who created Superman. This was one of their earlier characters. And he has this either a sphere or 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 a disc or something. It's, it's unclear if that's what that is exactly but it's mystic symbol of the seven which allows him to uh to sort of mind control these people 
to force them to uh, to calm down. While that's happening, the uh, the the last of the shadow creatures attack. So Etrigan, Doctor Fate, uh, Doctor Occult, and Amethyst they make their escape. Superman from Earth One is trying to uh, to console Superman from Earth Two. You know he he mentions how you know he helped him with the death of Supergirl a, fish, a few issues ago, and they you know he's like I'll stand by your side and I'll help you get through this. We see the island of Themyscira. This is an, a place that we have not seen much in this book. We haven't seen much of Wonder Woman at all. But we see the, you know, basically the same thing that's happening to Superman is happening to Wonder Woman. She's meeting her older self. Older self meeting her younger self. We see Batman and Robin. They mention that there's only one Joker, one Penguin, one Riddler. It's convenient that the writers would want to keep around those characters. Sure, they, they keep around the, the characters that they like and they kill off whoever they don't want to use anymore or people they're willing to give up. So they decide that they want to uh, find out what everyone else knows. They go to uh, interrogate Lex Luthor in his prison cell and uh, they're questioning him. He doesn't remember anything. He says that he would never help these heroes and uh, so they realize this is where they sort of put together that if you weren't there for that singularity with the anti-monitor inspector, if you weren't present for those events, then you can't remember the other universes, even if you had known about it previously. We see Gorilla City, a place that we hadn't seen since very early in this book. King Solovar is there. He's hurt. You remember he was injured helping Commandy in issues like two or three I want to say but since he wasn't there for the events of the last issue he doesn't even re remember why he's injured now and we see this character Cave Carson this is I think the only time we see him in this book but he's a uh, with a mining crew and they're down in this in this uh in this huge crater and they see all this antimatter that's in the core of the world they accidentally release it and it comes up and it fills the sky. And of course, Pariah is teleported away to the danger and uh, antimatter is taking over Alexander Luther's body and the earth is eclipsed. And the last page, dun dun dun, the return of the anti-monitor, he lives. And that's the end of this issue. Next issue, issue 12, the last part. Stay tuned for the finale. Hope to see you there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.